What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Hashtag Black Professionals Project. Today, I am here with another young black professional killing the game, living out here on the West Coast with myself. Um, and if you don't know me, my name is Kenton Hipsher. I am the CEO and founder of the Black Professionals Project, where our mission is to educate and inspire black and brown youth through exposing them um, to careers via black and brown professionals. So with that, I would like to introduce our guest today, the young and beautiful Jada. Hey. Hey girl, what's happening? How you <laughs> been? <laughs> Family, what is up? I've been great, how are you? Good, 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 good. I've been living like here on the West Coast, the best coast, of course. The best coast, exactly. Staying warm, you know, staying healthy, more importantly. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Jada and I both went to the same undergraduate institution. We both came from Rose Holman Institute of Technology, the STEM engineering school. Um, and Jada here is an electrical engineer. That's correct. I am an electrical engineer. Uh, I work in the uh, defense industry right now, so. Okay, dope. Yeah. Dope. So hopefully today some of these youths will learn a little bit of something about electrical engineering. Oh yeah, I'm still learning, so I don't have all the <laughs> answers. Disclaimer right there. Uh, but, you know, that's the life here. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So, um, so to get it started, you know, what is your age group? What is your ethnicity? And where are you from? Okay, uh, so first, I am 24 years old. Um, I identify as African American, um, and I am from Gary, Indiana, hey. uh, so in the Midwest. <laughs> you know, uh, the best. Uh, so yeah, but currently I'm living out in a uh, Los Angeles area. Dope, dope. Yeah, so I'm also from Indiana. So, you know, we Indiana family already right there. Alrighty. And I also made it out to the West Coast. So we living good. We having a good time <laughs> over here. It's great. <laughs> so Jada, talk to them about your profession. You know, what is it that you do as an electrical engineer in the defense space? Because there are a lot of electrical engineers that do a variety of things so what is it specifically that you do yeah uh so uh what i do currently um and i've served like in many roles over the past like two years that i've been a professional um because i actually switched companies before i actually worked uh as a modeling and simulation analyst so I was still in the defense uh, industry, but I decided I wanted to veer away from software and go more into hardware. Uh, so right now I basically test, uh, d d uh, design tests and um, hardware for space systems. Um, so all the systems that go into space, like satellites, radars, things like that, uh, my team actually builds test systems um, so we can simulate uh, everything that's going on uh, for a, a space system. Um, so when it goes into space, we know or have data uh, already in the back so we can like be prepared for everything um, before we send it out. So that's what I do pretty much in a, I guess, a short little spiel. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. And I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, I do all these interviews and I learn a lot about people's careers, but it's always great to hear it from the person who does it themselves and how they describe what it is they do. So, right. you know, you can call her Jada, but, you know, you can also think of her as like the the black Elon Musk type. Oh, yeah. Space. Let's, let's, let's go there. In the defense <laughs> and space industry. <laughs> oh, yeah. See my face right there. Defense, a.k.a. Elon Musk. Hey, it's I can see up. it right now. I see the vision. <laughs> I see the vision and I feel the vibe. Oh, yeah. So I know it's oh, happening. Yeah. yeah. So what's a day in the life like for you as an electrical engineer? Uh, my day definitely varies. Um, so first, pretty much, you know, so I work with a client. Um, so uh, first and foremost, answering all types of questions that our client has filling out requirements um, that our uh, client 
uh, wants. Um, so th- it's pretty much like day to day tasks. It's like just filling out requirements and um, just making sure our client, we satisfy our client. So that's like the number one thing. Um, and then I actually work in a laboratory. Uh, so that's where we actually have our hardware. And okay. that's where I go in. Uh, our hardware actually, uh, some some big stuff came in uh, this past week. So we're getting ready right now. We're in the uh, testing phase. So mm-hmm. there's a design phase that uh, we actually went through for about three or four months, uh, designing the hardware. Um, and now we're going to test the hardware. So uh, the hardware we have is basically, um, as I said before, we, we test other hardware that goes into space but how do you know if the hardware that you made works right (laughs) you have to test it before you can test other things right so that's what we're doing so my team actually tests the hardware uh so we're in a lab for uh i'll say about two weeks two or three weeks uh trying to make sure we meet spec um or requirements uh making sure the stuff that we design actually works, right? Um, because if it doesn't, then you know our client is going to be kind of upset, you know. So um, you just have to make sure uh, everything works. So I'm in a lab pretty much, uh, say, ten hours a wow. day. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, we we try to we. My team is pretty small, but we try to you know correlate things so you know no one gets burnt out. Because if someone gets burnt out, you know, productivity uh, definitely decreases. So uh, we definitely um, try not to work a lot. But sometimes when you're just in the groove, you're like, okay, let's just get things, you know, rolling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, And yeah, that's pretty much it. And just um, it, it goes from it varies from day to day. So sometimes I'm in the lab all day. Sometimes I'm just like, I actually get to work from home. Uh, now that you know uh, the pandemic's going on, um, I, I work from home sometimes when I just have to like uh, talk to clients. And uh, but when I have to go to a lab, I go into the office. So yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that's really interesting because I know for me as a non-electrical engineer, I would typically think you know when I hear electrical, I think you know circuits and circuit boards plugging stuff in and stuff like that but that yeah. don't sound like what you be doing that does not sound like what you be doing at all so it's it's nice to get another perspective and inside yeah. look into yeah. what it is that really is you know electrical engineering for you at least yeah i mean the, again like electrical engineer is so broad so i guess the biggest misconception about it um that when you say electrical engineer most people think you know electrician or mm-hmm. like circuits and you know electrocution and stuff like that shocking and it's like it it does not you know it's very broad you know so uh, specifically for me though um i am more on the i guess hardware side but we design the hardware um we don't actually build the hardware so i don't i don't get near any circuits um <laughs> I don't like solder wires because I did that in school. It was not the best. Like that's <laughs> not my that's not my you know cup of tea, right? Um, so I wouldn't even trust myself in doing that. And and my managers know. So, um, but I definitely. So we just design the hardware. You know, there's someone out there special who actually builds the hardware has who has those. Uh, tools and then we come back and just make sure you know hardware works uh, the way it's supposed to so we can deliver it to clients so yeah so it's a lot of like interfacing between between people you Mm -hmm. know and not just like I'm not just at my office or my desk every day just like you know emailing and or like uh, working on like a circuit design or something like that I actually have to like interface pretty much every day with someone Mm -hmm. yet so so the it's complete defi- opposite of what we yeah. think about when we think engineer. When most people yeah. think engineer, they think nerd pushes glasses, calculators, and... I mean, I can do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Get you but somebody no. who can do both. That's what both. we're saying. Exactly, exactly. You you definitely have to... And I think to be a successful engineer and to just be a successful professional, you know, you have to, you know, have a set skill, right? 
and be good at that. But also, you know, there's people out there who, um, you know, want to interface with you or need to interface with you, you know, and you have to have those soft skills, right? We talk about the hard skills, the, the, you know, nerds and everything like that, right? But you actually have to know how to, you know, interface with people, um, talk with them, uh, just make sure they understand everything, communication. Communication is a big thing, right? Perfect, and that it's like it all ties into being a good professional. Um, so yeah. So how did you get to you know the point to where you are today? Like at least academically, you know what tracks yeah. did you take to get there? Because there's a lot of paths to get to one area, right? So what right. did you do to get to become an electrical engineer? I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I'll say for me, uh, I can again. I come from Gary, Indiana. Uh, which is a predominantly African-American community. Um, and a lot of people who come out of Gary, Indiana, uh, go into sports, you know, they're, you know, the jocks, the uh, professional football players, basketball players, or uh, singers, dancers, things like that. When it comes to like, you know, the tech and STEM industry is very slim. Um, but thankfully I had an amazing uh, teacher it was actually, um, I believe, calculus. But I actually met him. Um, he was a Caucasian male. And he, I met him in middle school, I believe. Um, and he introduced me and a couple of my friends to Nesby. Uh, so Nesby is the National Society of Black Engineers. Uh, it's just a, a national uh, group uh, who all basically trying to make sure you know black people succeed in the engineering field that's basics and you know have the tools to do that right so um i was actually uh introduced to nesby junior right and um i actually for all of my i'll say high school up from freshman to junior year, I actually did like little projects on the side um, with that uh, teacher. Um, so it was like, you know, learning how to code uh, using Lego Mindstorms, which are like robot, little robots, um, or um, building uh, trebuchets, like catapults and stuff out of like wood or just doing little projects. And it's like opening my my mind and my eyes to this whole different world of like STEM, right? So it's like you can use your your knowledge of math and science to to build something. And I was like, okay, I like this. I can do this, right? <laughs> um, and so uh, I actually uh, then got pushed into um, I wouldn't say push, but like cohort into this program called Mites. Uh, which is Minority Introduction to Engineering Science, which is like a program um, ho that's held at MIT. So it's like a six-week program, and they, they get juniors uh, and from minority backgrounds to come out there, and they pay for it full, like full out, uh, to introduce them to like the STEM world, right? And I was actually selected to go my junior year, and that's where I found out uh, what the different, you know, uh, fields of engineering um, from mechanical engineering to biomedical to chemical engineering. Um, but I was lucky enough to be dropped into the electrical engineering uh, group. And that's where I, you know, kind of flourished. And I was like, okay, I like this, you know, circuits, I can, you know, design circuits. I can actually see stuff. Uh, like I, I was a big, I'm still big into music, right? So like knowing that, you know, to produce audio and like uh or mixing audio and everything like that the stuff that we hear you know the djs everything that they use uh, electrical engineer or someone in, in around that field had to design that right mm -hmm. and just like learning that oh i can do something like this or you know be involved in stuff like this i was like okay yeah i'll do that <laughs> So, yeah, I, I did that, and then um, it was pretty successful. I was like, okay, I got to I gotta take this further. So that's when, uh, you know, I started applying to, electrical, to schools for engineering. So uh, I accepted to Rose Holman. My career just, like, 
I'll say, you know, Rose Home was definitely a challenge. You know? Because <laughs> uh, you may know, it definitely opened my eyes to a lot of things. Um, but it was definitely worth it. Uh, those four years being, being in school, uh, majoring in electrical engineering, it was great. I, I met a lot of people, uh, have a lot of professors who are very knowledgeable. I know a lot of them. Um, and just having a lot of people in my corner now, you know, that I can utilize. And uh, they just like helped me, uh, as I'll say, help me develop my career and push me further than I thought that I can go, you know? So mm-hmm. shout out to them. <laughs> so yeah. you got into some programs, you know, when you were in high school uh, yeah. that helped you, you know, get exposure to yeah. the field and then you ended up pursuing that further in undergrad where you went to Rose Holman, of course, and studied right. electrical engineering. And now you are where you are today. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. It sounds so simple, right? <laughs> so simple. You know, it's so yeah. easy, really. Any, yeah. anybody, anybody can do it. Can do it. <laughs> but anybody it's true. It's it. true. I'll, I'll say because my school and my uh, the community that I grew up was, again, just not as developed as some of the other neighboring communities right so it it can seem like discouraging like oh why why can't i you know have a coding class like this in my like day-to-day schooling right um but thankfully my parents like they wanted better for me you know than they had so um and i was willing to learn and wanted to wanted to learn you know so like they put me in these programs and I, we, we researched and tried to find other ways that I can, you know, get the tools that I needed to develop my now career. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, definitely. If I, you don't have it, I'll say this, like if you don't have it now in like your day to day school, like don't be discouraged. Right. You know, there's other programs out there that are willing, like willing to help you develop your skills and things like that. They have some online, you know, um, and again, like Nesby Jr., like in Nesby, uh, they have programs and they reach out to, to youth um, to get them where we are right now. And they help them do that. Because um, we, we know everybody does not have the, or come from the same background, right? But if we give them the tools to use it, then they can flourish, right? Certainly. And that's what this is about, is giving people the information and the yeah. tools to be able to pursue the careers that are of interest to them. Um, right. But, you know, you can't be interested in something you don't even know exists. So that's why we exist today, to help mm. help shine some light on these careers. Um, exactly. So, you know, what is it that you would say it gets you excited about electrical engineering? What gets you to wake up every morning? Because 10 hours a day doesn't always sound appealing to everybody. So, and I know that it's not always 10 hours, you know, but yeah. what is it that wakes you up and says, you know what, I'm ready to go get at it? Um, I definitely say, okay, obviously the money, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it was definitely like, oh, Hey, talk oh, about oh, it. Talk well, about I it. Will, <laughs> I will say like, okay, those four years of college, you know, I really, I struggled, but I always heard somebody say, you know, good paying jobs out here, you know, um, that, that's definitely a perk, you know, <laughs> I can, I can live the life that I want, you know, but also the money isn't everything. Um, but I think the main thing that gets me out of bed is just being able to design something and then being able to see my design in real life, you know, uh, I, I had, I actually designed like a circuit and designed it using software here and like in a couple of weeks I actually see my circuit board like in the flesh like real I get to hold this you know design that something that I design right and will be used in order to uh, help test other um, I guess other like software or hardware that's going to go into space one day like that stuff is exciting to me right (laughs) Um, it might not be for everybody, but like that was exciting to me. Just having it, I guess, no matter what it is, uh, just having the opportunity to see something like or have something in my hand that, that you know, came out of my brain, right? Um, so I definitely say that that's like 
what I enjoy the most. And then also knowing that there's more opportunity out there. Like I am an engineer right now, but like if I don't want to be in my goal right now is actually to go into the manager uh, route. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if I don't want to do engineering all day or for my, the rest of my life, there's another path that I can take. Right. I don't have to just be stuck in the engineering field, but I'll have that knowledge, you know, after a couple of years of doing what I do to, hey, manage a, a team or something like that. Exactly. So that's like one of my, my one of my goals. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you want to have the ability to grow. You want to have that, that flexibility to kind of pivot wherever you want to move and yeah. still, you know, be secure in your interests, in your passions, exactly. still get those things satisfied. So that's exactly. great to hear that, you know, you have that opportunity now. Uh, I, will, I will say, though, I didn't always have that opportunity because, again, I probably mentioned before, um, I worked at a different company mm -hmm. and uh when i first started i thought okay this is like you know amazing it was a big company and i was like oh i get to do all this stuff but as i actually you know had time to you know work and it's like oh i'm not interested in this at all like <laughs> this sucks <laughs> this ain't it <laughs> like this is not it like i didn't like at times it was like i didn't want to go to work like i didn't want to get out of bed Mm -hmm. And because I, I just didn't want to do this. And like, I finally like got the courage and said like, okay, if I don't like this. I don't have to force myself to do this. Like there's something else out there for me, right? Something bigger and better. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I just like cut ties and was like, okay, it's time to make something happen somewhere else. <laughs> something that I enjoy, right? Because one should not suffer the money is is not everything because I, I enjoyed like having the money, but it was like, oh no, I cannot do this for the rest of my life. Yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. So yeah, that's important. That's a very important thing to state to people is your first job may not always be the best job. <laughs> Say that again. Say it louder for the people in the back. You oh. know, you're gonna have to you have to go through some trials and some tribulations before you really figure out the place that may be for you. And, you know, it could be a case where six six months from now, hopefully this doesn't happen, but maybe you don't enjoy what you're doing anymore, but you have the knowledge and the flexibility to switch up and do something oh, yeah. different. And I will admit, I'm the type of person to that, like, I can get bored of something pretty quick, you know? <laughs> and it's like, sometimes I have to stop myself like, just wait it out a bit, you know, learn some more. But I mean, yeah, I definitely say like, there might come a time that's like, okay, maybe I want to switch careers or switch, you know, companies and things like that. And I, I'm okay with it, you know, because then I'll be able to learn something more, you know. So don't be afraid to, to stop what you're doing if you don't like something, you know. It's like, there's other other things out there for you to do. Of course, believe in yourself and believe in the value that you bring to somebody. And if you do that, the world is really yours. You'll yeah. find the path that's for you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, talking about switching up and some things here and there, uh, what would you say are, you know, just mm, two, two obstacles that you face? You know on a day-to-day -day basis because at any career there's going to be an obstacle so what are, what are some things you have to deal with i'll say one major obstacle right now that i've been actually i'm dealing with it right now as you know the world is changing is being an african-american female in a predominantly white male industry right and just realizing and understanding that my voice matters right and that i bring something to the table that somebody else or that they may be missing right um and i know times are pretty rough right now for a lot of people um and just like dealing with that mental capacity of having to bear uh the the challenges it's pretty hard right now when a, a lot of your peers may not understand what's going on right um, so just 
being able to balance like my mental um i guess yeah my my mental life and uh just like work is has definitely been a, a big challenge right now um but again I, i'll definitely say mental health is like my number one priority like i cannot burn myself out you know <laughs> no matter how good the money is no matter you know uh how how much you know some somebody might need you if you do not feel or have the mental capacity to you know handle that it is okay to take time off you know because if you don't you will burn yourself out and we, you will not be productive uh, and that's what i'm struggling with right now is just understanding that you know because like times are hard like people people aren't able to come in as much right and you have to carry the burden of doing maybe you know twice as much as you you've already done or that you've been doing and it's like okay you have to learn how to say hey let's put this like step back i can't handle all of this right now you know i'm doing as much as i can right um and i want to be productive and i want the team to be productive as well right um so that's one thing and then also being young you know like this engineer world is it's not, not it's easy. not young it's <laughs> not it's not easy for the young folk right i'm like not even 25 right and uh a lot of my I was, i'm i'm going to say it, a lot of my coworkers are old enough to be my father so <laughs> like i work with a lot of people that's like you know Oh, I have kids your age or kids a little older than you. I'm like, okay, but I don't sir. want you to right, <laughs> sir, exactly. I don't want you to look at me like I'm your child. First of all, like no. I want you to be uh equal, right? Mm-hmm. And and I like, you know, I'm still trying to understand that, still working through that because again, you know, this is a continuous learning curve here. And so like just navigating that have like b- being an engineer but being a young engineer, young female engineer, um and just like, you know, making sure that my voice is heard, you know, trying to understand that or, or or trying to uh educate those around me, you know, and making sure that they see me as an equal, you know. But also is you know, being respectful uh but also uh wanting that respect that I put out, right? So, yeah, those those two definitely might have been uh some of my biggest challenges. I'm actually still working through. I'm still learning, right? Like it's all it's not always perfect, but I I keep going, right? Of course. I mean, it, those are challenges for anybody, I feel like. Yeah. Um in almost any stage of their career, you know, outside of the age thing because as you get older, you know, you're the person then on the other side of that coin but all right um exactly. you know and as you gotta, long as you we got to remember how you felt remember like you felt when you were young like yes you got to understand that when you get older these people are looking up to you now these these younger folks are looking up to you so it's like what what was i feeling and it's like okay i understand i understand what they're going through right so mm-hmm. it's just you know making sure it's a generational thing right so but it's worth <laughs> it is worth it and um you know we're almost done here already i mean it's gone by really quickly um awesome. but you know in addition to some of the obstacles you face i guess in closing remarks what would be a couple pieces of advice you would give to young black and brown youths who are aspiring to you know follow in your footsteps or basically you know follow up on your career. Yeah. Uh one thing a couple I'll say two things that I'll say is one um get your education. Like no matter where you get it from, it does not matter if you get it from the the top engineering school or you know uh community college, like get your education because you can always be learning, right? You always want to learn you because there's always a need there's going to be a need for you you know um there's a need for engineers and uh i definitely say education is key it is going to be hard 
I will say it's going to be hard. It's going to be a struggle. Like there's times when I was an undergrad that I was like, okay, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. It's so hard. Right. But then there are people that are supporting you and rooting for you. That's another piece of advice is that if you find yourself struggling, there's always going to be someone that is rooting for you. Right. And just like, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Because if you don't reach out for help, if you don't ask questions, then you will not succeed, right? You always, you have to reach out for help or, you know, you can't do this alone. Like everybody, and I, sometimes I, I struggle with that. It's like, I want to do it myself, you know? Yeah. I, I don't need help. I'm independent, you know? I don't need anyone. But it's like, no, Jada, you need to, some help, right? So like definitely reaching out to people just ask for help get a mentor you know there's there's many ways to like help you uh grow and help yourself like succeed in life you know no matter if you don't you know there's there's all types of engineering fields you know mm -hmm. software mechanical just learn about it even if it's not electrical but it's the best field but <laughs> <laughs> if it's not electrical I had to put myself in my shameless plug, plug. Right there, you know? <laughs> just drop it in there but yeah so definitely those those i hope you whoever's watching you know this use use what i said please take what i said and use it you know to we'll succeed i'm rooting for you well you got one person <laughs> right there and you only need exactly. one and with that we want to yeah. thank jada for coming on today to the hashtag black professionals project and sharing her career and her professional journey with us and most importantly i just want to look directly to the camera here and tell everybody please make sure you like comment subscribe to the channel so that you'll never miss an update from us and let us know if there's anybody that you want us to you know reach out to or a career that you're interested in learning about and i'll jump on linkedin myself and i'll do the work and i'll go figure out who's doing it and i'll try to get them on here so with that jada do you have any closing remarks any shout outs you want to give uh shout out to my mom mama made it <laughs> <laughs> uh shout out to the nezzy family uh hey. shout out to you as well for thank doing you this. thank you you know this is awesome i support you 100 percent uh and like if you again i'm gonna reach out to some people and say hey you know like subscribe to this channel because you know there's some great information out here certainly so. i appreciate it and once again i have been kenton hipshire and thank you guys for tuning in we'll see you next time on the hashtag black professionals project